Hello friends, my name is Ashley, this is Sleepy Books, and today I'm reading from one author, Grady Hendrix. So I've never tried horror before and I thought the best way to go into horror was to start with like kind of parody, like not taken too seriously horror. And I'm just very excited about it. Trying a new genre is always fun reading about crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense is always fun so hopefully i have a good time and in this video i am reading the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires my best friend's exorcism and horror store so let's get into the video shall we hello so yeah i'm looking a little bit busted okay i don't believe in doing my hair anymore anyway <laughs> i'm about to start the southern guide to killing vampires that is just the name is too long the vampire book by grandrix i'm very excited about it i don't know much about it other than it's supposed to be like about this group of women who have a book club and like a vampire moves in and like crazy stuff ensues i'm not sure but i also realized that like 90 percent of like my tbr is like either soft horror or like thriller and like i'm gonna have to like throw something extra fluffy in there just to like balance it out because it's a little much i didn't realize because while i'm reading this i'm also like listening to sadie and like it's it's kind of a lot like kind of a lot you know what i mean so yeah but i'm very excited to start it and I'll obviously keep you updated. Do you hear those little taps? That's my dogs. That's my dogs running around. So I'm not usually someone that cares about prologues, but the Southern book for slaying vampires, that started off strong. I have to say that prologue knew what it was doing. So I'm only just starting chapter three, but <laughs> I'm already really enjoying this book, I have to say. I'm obsessed with these women <laughs> that are in this book club. Book? Book club? So it starts off with these women in a book club that, like, have this, like, leader of the book club that, like, forces them to read, like, boring, crazy, great works of Western culture. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's really stupid stuff. Anyway, they don't want to do that anymore and then they start a like true crime murder mystery book club they like read silence of the lambs trashy romance detective novels and then they'll switch it up with like true crime inside john wayne gacy's head like <laughs> but yeah it's just i'm i'm just like obsessed with them and they like become friends through their book club where they talk about murder and it's just ugh. I love it. I love it. And the one lady, she's like, my husband thinks this is a Bible book club because he just won't get me reading all of these nasty things. <laughs> and like, it has like little sayings sometimes. It's just like, I realized that I became friends with these women. And we all know that if our husbands start to take insurance policies on us, we're screwed. <laughs> Okay, so before I say anything, I have the paper plate there because there is a bug flying around my house. It looks like between a bee and a mosquito, and I've never seen it before in my entire life. It looks crazy and creepy, and it doesn't make a sound when it flies. Like, I don't know when it's going to land on me, but it keeps, like, landing on me. But now that I finally have something to slap it with, it's, like, gone. So, anyway, we're just going to move past that. There's finally some action in the book. Uh, the main character, Patricia, she got attacked by an el elderly woman when she was trying to take the trash out. She bit off half of her ear. The elderly woman bit off half of Patricia's ear and I keep like feeling my ear to make sure it's like still there because that scene kind of creeps me out just a little, little bit. Also, we've met the vampire and Patricia's husband's mother has dementia and the vampire came to dinner at their house. Like, they don't know he's the vampire, but like you as the reader know he's the vampire. And I think that the, the grandma, Patricia's husband's mom, the grandma, 
she I think she knows he's a vampire but she like can't get it out right you know she's like she said you took daddy's money I know who you are and I have a photograph but she like said it kind of mixed up and it sounds like she's just talking gibberish and it's like is she though and she she keeps like saying like an owl bit her and there's an owl staring at her and i just feel like it's like tr she's trying to say something else you know i just i just like want to cover my ears i don't know that just, she just like she was just gnawing on her like you know does this vampire dude control rats is that what just happened that was insane what the so I know these books were going to touch on the Atlanta, the Atlanta monster. It, they like literally just like introduced that. The two, these two women, Patricia and then like the other woman, this other woman in the book club, Kitty, went to visit Miss May's caretaker, if that makes sense. And Miss May's caretaker lives in the neighborhood of where the Atlanta monster hunting grounds were, you know? And Kitty basically called this mom a liar because the murders of these children weren't in the newspaper. Like, I know things were different back in the day. Like, if it, if it wasn't in the newspaper, it, like, essentially didn't happen. But, like, could you imagine calling a mom that's scared for her children's lives and the children in the neighborhood a liar? Like, she, she was like, it wasn't in the newspaper. So, I don't, I don't know if I believe you. Like, it really bothered me. I just, mm, when you want to punch a book character, you know, I just. So, I just finished the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That was wild. So, I was wrong. It's based off the Atlanta monster, but it's like not the actual cases but it's heavily influenced by the Atlanta monster. But man, that book was crazy. There was a lot of commentary about things like the way people treat kids of color, like how they don't care if they die or go missing, and how like the husbands treated their wives when they thought that the vampire was like a bad person. They were like trying to get rid of him and they like I can't explain it. You have to read it to understand, but it's very much like I'm the man and you're the stupid woman and you need to shut up now. But yeah, i giving this five stars. It was really good. So I'm about to start my best friend's exorcism. I know I look like a crap. We're not going to talk about it. All I know about this book is that this girl and her best friend go to like the woods or something and then the best friend loses her in like at a house and then like when she finds her she starts acting crazy or something i'm not entirely sure i don't feel like that's maybe correct yeah it's eventually an exorcism obviously because that's what the book is called <laughs> also just this cover this cover it's so gorgeous like i love how it's like purposely to look old like ugh, i love it almost almost looks like a vhs tape like, there's like that little bit. I mean, there's that. <laughs> where I put it with my tongue. There's that VHS sign right there. So we got to the scene where the best friend, Gretchen, is getting possessed by the demon. It's these four girls, the main character, the best friend, these two other girls that are friends with them, they decided to take acid. <laughs> They went to go skinny dipping and like something went wrong. They were like, no, let's don't go. But Gretchen like jumped in anyway. And then she got lost and she ran to this like abandoned house in the woods, stark naked. And like the main character, Abby, was looking for her and she kept saying, hearing voices and it felt like someone was watching her. And when she found the house, she said she kept seeing this like blackness moving around like shadows and like she said it felt evil and that's where Gretchen was the whole time so obviously you know the possession that's what's happening I've read just past like a little bit past that scene and it's like she's definitely starting to act a little strange she, she keeps saying that she feels someone touching her all the time like during the whole day and she keeps seeing like blood in random places they're like no it's just the acid like it's just the acid it's gonna wear off 
So I don't really know exactly where it's going, but you can like feel it. Like it feels like doom is about to happen. Also, this book is like the same setting as the southern guy dislaying vampires. It's like the same town, except like a few years earlier. I wonder if it'll be mentioned at all. I don't think anyone, anything was mentioned in the Slaying Vampires book, but it's just interesting with the same setting. So the school coach is giving an assembly about rape juice. And she said, you have no idea how many girls have run crying in my office, ashamed that they've ruined their family's name ruined the school's name and lost their one treasure that they could give to their one true love. A whole school assembly, the entire school is there and she's blaming, <laughs> she's blaming the girls. Okay, okay. I just like, <laughs> so the exorcist guy is tying up Gretchen to finally do the exorcist and he asked Abby to get an old sheet and <laughs> to tie her up instead of like pantyhose and he was like, it's less pornographic this way. So the exorcist guy put a athletic cup on over his pants and then um, stood up, clapped his Bible and said, let's go do the Lord's work. So I just finished this. That was a really good ending. Hello, I just want to come on here and say that I'm not going to be reading this book right now. And no, I'm not DNFing it. DNFing it. I really want to read this. I'm like, I'm excited to read this, but I've read so much horror, like parody horror, like ridiculous murder, like hauntings. I just like, I need something different like I, ju I just want to read some romance or some fantasy or like anything else like all day I've been like doing chores so I don't have to read this book like scrubbing the floors folding the laundry doing the laundry like you name it I've done it to not read this book and I feel like it's putting me in a reading slump like I said I just I really want to read it but I'm just like I can't like I just can't like I'm not like that big of a horror person and I've been just reading too much of it so but as for trying an author, Grady Hendrix seems really like a really good writer. Like I'm really excited about the books I did read in this video and I will continue to read books by Grady Hendrix in the future and I will definitely get to this eventually, but I just, I can't right now, you know? So that was the journey. I hope you enjoyed. I had one wild ride to say the least. A Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires is pretty dark like i feel like it's like real horror and not parody horror my best friend's exorcism and horror store is there's a pretty graphic well it's not pretty graphic you see the aftermath of one of the women in the book club um getting sexually assaulted by the vampire and it's like really rough like there's a lot of dead kids in this book and there's sexual assault go into it knowing that it's not a fun book like yeah there are jokes in it the women are they make jokes all the time and they read horror novels themselves but it's just don't expect something fun and fluffy and romantic when it's definitely not the vampire is the villain of the story and my best friend's exorcism this was a lot too there's also like sexual assault trigger warnings for this but like the demon does stuff to both of the friend and her best friend and honestly can i just say that abby and gretchen's relationship was super queer like i do not understand how they weren't together it just reminded me of rice and danica in crescent city it's just like they belong together they should be together why aren't they together i'm sweating for how much i just wish they these two were together like why why weren't they together and also, like, I'll never get over this book cover. Like, they had the hard version, the hardback version of this book, but it's not the same cover. Like, it is so ugly. It's like a bunch of pictures from a yearbook, and I, like, I hate it. I hate it so much. But this is supposed to be, like, a VHS tape. Like, it says VHS right here. It says, be kind, please rewind. And then it says staff picks, like, you know, when you, like, used to go to, like, the video store to rent a movie. And then it's this, these are supposed to be like scenes from the movie. 
and it's just like I love it like whoever designed this should get like some type of middle so that was the video I hope you enjoyed I'm gonna go sleep because I sleep when I'm not in front of the camera bye